Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston and I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School and Weekly Bible Lesson. We are doing our lesson for February the 4th uh, and our lesson for this week is faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And we are doing our lesson. We'll start doing our lesson early because I'm going to make a change in the way I bring the lesson out. Uh, as of uh, this coming week, uh, Lord blessed, I will be separating the lesson. I will have Monday through Friday's lesson uh, on one setting, and I will have Sunday and Saturday and Sunday's lesson on another setting, which will uh, bring in some of the things we've talked about on Monday through Friday. So we can decrease the amount of time that the tape is running. Uh, so you won't have to sit through such a long uh, time. So uh, we're going to get ready for our lesson. And our lesson uh, for Monday is fulfilling the law. And this lesson is coming from James 8, uh, James 2, 8 through 13. First, we're going to have a prayer. Amen. Dear God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you because you are wonderful. We thank you because you are God Almighty. You are our all in all. We thank you that you are Lord of our life, that you are our salvation. You are our Savior. We, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. Lord, we give you all the glory and all the praise. We want to ask you, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins and that we would uh, uh, not uh, repeat those sins, that we would uh, be doers of your word and not hearers only. We thank you, Lord, for all the things that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in our life. Lord, we ask that as we come before you with this week's lesson, that you would open our eyes that we may see, our ears that we may hear, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word, that we may receive what you have for each of us this day from this lesson, because we know that each one of us have something personal that we can gain from the lesson, and we thank you, Lord, that we do receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. We go uh, get ready and get started. And I said the week's lesson is faith without works is dead. But Monday's lesson is fulfilling the law. We start with fulfilling the law in James 2, 8 through 13. And the scripture lesson takes read, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as, thy, as thyself, you do well. Uh, as we have, many of us have heard uh, and we do uh, are aware that if we fulfill this law to love our neighbor as ourselves, then we will not uh, talk about them. We will not backbite them. We will not backbite. We will not uh, uh, cause trouble for them. We will not. Uh, we will uh, love them as we love ourselves. We will uh, uh, not want to harm them. We will not want anything wrong to happen to them. We will be there for them. And as if we uh, love them as we love ourselves, we will treat them as we would want to be treated. Amen. Uh, the, the ninth verse said, but if you have respect to person, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors or a violator of the law of uh, what transgressors is. Uh, if you have respect to person, you commit a sin. You 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 hear a lot of people say, "Well, I'm a good person. I, I don't have to uh, uh, receive uh, salvation from the Lord. I'm a good person. I don't do nobody no wrong. I don't do no harm to nobody. I I, I help people that need helping. But if you do anything wrong, if you lie on anybody, if you uh, 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 have uh, partiality to one person above another, anything that you do that steps outside of the law, then you are guilty of it all. So we do not want to commit the sin of uh, uh, having respect a person and not uh, uh, treating them as we would want to be treated. If we have respect a person, you do commit a sin. We are to treat each one as we want to be treated. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. As I was saying, if as you feeling of a person feeling that I'm a good person, I do that which is good to others, I, I help those that I can help, but if we lie, if we uh, 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 
uh, do things that uh, that is in the law, then we have uh, com committed against the whole law. So we, you are not under, uh, you are not saved. You will die in your sins. You cannot uh, do one part and not the whole thing up under the law. For he that said, do not commit adultery, and said, do not kill, said also, excuse me, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor, or as I said before, which is a violator of the law. Now, we look at this verse, and many of us will say, well, I don't commit adultery, and I don't kill nobody. But it, it comes down to the point is, uh, if we lie on somebody, if we uh, 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 talk about someone, uh, if we... Uh, uh, Anything that we do that is not uh, right in the sight of the Lord, if we do any of these things, uh, then we fall in, under the law, and this is where we uh, do not have forgiveness. This is why you want to be saved and filled with his precious Holy Ghost and that with fire. That way you can go to a great and merciful God that will forgive you of your sins. It says, so speak ye and so do. And they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy that hath showed no mercy. And mercy rejoices against judgment. Amen. Uh, I did find some information on this chapter. It says, Who is my neighbor? As in Luke 10, 29 through 37, our neighbor is anyone who has a need which we can meet. And this came from the uh, Believer's Bible Commentary. It says in uh, verse uh, 12 in Romans uh, 14, uh, in verse 12 it says, We find the law of liberty first mentioned in James 1 and 25, but the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and pers pers uh, perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in doing the doing his blessed in his doing. James here refers to the gospel, which although is called the law, here a law is not strictly speaking. So when you hear James speaking of law, he is speaking of the gospel. Some of the uh, law of liberty that I did look up, it says that was in Romans uh, 14, and I'm just going to read a few verses of that. It says, receive one who is weak in the faith but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let not him who eats despise him who does not eat. And let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Amen. If we look at that, we know that those that has uh, came to Christ uh, has the opportunity for forgiveness, those that have uh, faith and believe that certain things are that are not, and we're not talking about murder, we're not talking about uh, 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 backbiting, we're not talking about adultery, uh, but other of the other things that they deal with, as in what you eat and and what you wear and 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 what you put on, those type of things. It's the person uh, is the one that. Uh, determines whether or not uh, they believe this is wrong or not. It's just like uh, when uh, Peter was uh, up on the roof and he had the vision and the Lord brought the animals down in the, in the, in the, in the, sh in the sheet, I would say, uh, and he said, call nothing that I have uh, made c uh, common or unclean. Amen. i am read your passage uh, concerning this lesson uh, from uh, Matthew Henry Concise Commentary said the scripture gives as a law to love our neighbor as ourselves. This law is a royal law. It comes from the king from the king of kings. And if Christians act unjustly, they are convicted by the law as transgressors. Uh, to think that our good deeds will atone for our bad deeds plainly puts us upon looking for another atonement. This is not of the Lord. If we believe that our good deeds uh, take a, uh, will, uh, will exchange for our bad deeds. It said we shall, even when we get forgiveness, uh, uh, we do have to pay for those things that we have did wrong. 
even though we have got forgiveness. According to the covenant of works, one breach of any one command brings a man under condemnation from which no ob obedience, past, present, or future can deliver him. This shows as the happiness of those that are in Christ. We may serve him without slavish fear. God's restraints are not a bondage, but our own corruptions are so. The doom passed upon impotent sinners at last will be judgment without mercy. But God deems it is his glory and joy to pardon and bless those who might just, justly be condemned at his tribunal and his grace teaches those who partake of his mercy to copy it in their conduct. Amen. As we are to know that God does forgive sin, but we are to copy Jesus Christ's conduct and as we walk, as we go about our life. Question ourselves of the great use of, in every part of the holy life. Let us be more frequent in this and in everything take an occasion to self-reflective, truth discerning, and spirit perceiving part of man which forever evaluates one's own soul, uh, the law of liberty. We are to ev forever evaluate how we are conducting ourselves amongst our brothers and sisters. Amen. Our Tuesday's lesson coming from uh, uh, the royal law is uh, Leviticus 19, 13 through 18. And the scripture lesson text reads, Thou shalt not defraud thy brother, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until morning. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear the Lord thy God. I am the Lord. Amen. We'll stop right here before we go too far. And we look at this, the first two verses. Thou shalt not defraud thy brother, thy neighbor, neither rob him of the wages of him that is hired. I, many of us say, I don't rob nobody and I don't steal from nobody, but we do have a tendency uh, that we uh, that I've seen in, in many of us that we'll have our sister or brother do work for us and we'll tell them that we're going to pay them. And at the time of us paying them, then we uh, bring up to them, well, I had another bill and I can't pay you. I had this to do and I can't pay you. Uh, as the Bible said, what man before he builds a house uh, goes forth and find out what he has and then uh, then go forth to, to build it. We are to make sure that we have what we tell the person we are going to do, that we do this and we don't hold back uh, trying to, uh, uh, because we want, some, we want to do something else. Uh, if we promise to do something, let us stand on that. Uh, we are not to be a stumbling block before the blind uh, and blind not necessarily means those that can't see, but blind can be uh, blind in understanding, blind in, 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 in knowledge, blind in wisdom. A as the Lord has blessed us to go forth in the word and in the understanding of the Lord, then we are not to be a stumbling block to those that uh, uh, are not in that place. It says, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shall thou judge thy neighbor. Amen. It says, uh, as we move down, it says, thou shalt do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor. Whether uh, poor, uh, rich, or they uh, have some, we are not to be uh, more... Uh, as we have known, been known to do, the, the best example is we always invite those to our home for dinner that can invite us back to their home. We are to help those that can't help themselves. We are to invite those uh, to dinner that can't invite us back. We are to offer a meal for those that uh, need a meal. Thou shalt not go up and down as talebearers among thy people, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in no wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Amen. The Lord wants us to look at each and everything we do and to, to judge it on whether or not we would do it. Uh, it would, we would, uh, 
take it upon ourselves to, to stand in this stead. If we are not, then we are not to do it to our neighbor. We are not to do it to someone we meet. We are not to do it to those that are less fortunate than us. Uh, the Matthew Henry Concise Commentary says, We must not detain what belongs to another, particularly the wages of the hireling. Uh, we must be tender of the critic as safety of those that cannot help themselves. Do no hurt to any because they are unwilling to unwilling and unable to avenge themselves. We ought to take heed of doing anything which may which may occasion our weak brother to fall. The fear of God should keep us from doing wrong things. Though they will not expose us to men's anger, judges and all the authority are commanded to give judgment without partiality. To be a talebearer and to sow discord among neighbors is as bad an offense as a man can put himself into. We are to rebuke our neighbor in love. If someone has done something to us, or we believe they have done something to us, we should pray and ask the Lord to give us understanding and knowledge about it and to go forth and speak to our neighbor about it, not go to our other neighbors and tell them what we believe the other person has did. We go to them and, and speak to them about it because it has been many times uh, uh, information has been passed along, passed down the road, down uh, across the street, and down on the phone, uh, from neighbor to neighbor, from person to person, and it not even be true when they actually get back to the person that they are speaking of, the person didn't, ha didn't even realize that this was a problem. So let us go to that person first before we get to speaking against others, amen? Rather rebuke him than hate him for an injury done to thyself. We incur guilt by not reproving. It is hating our brother. When we do this, this is considered hating our brother. And, and as the Lord said, if we hate our brother, we do not love him. How can you hate one that is with you daily and do not love, uh, uh, and love God whom you have never seen? We should say, I will do him the kindness to tell him of his faults. We are to put off all mouths and to put on brotherly love. We often wrong ourselves, but we soon forgive ourselves those wrong, and they do not at all lessen our love to ourselves. In like manner, we should love our neighbor. Amen. Amen. We're going to get ready. We're going to move on to Wednesday's lesson. Teach me to do your will. Teach me to do your will. This is a wonderful psalm that we're about to read. Uh, Psalms 143, uh, verses 1 through 12, which is the entire Psalms of, of uh, 143. Uh, from David, it said, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplication, and thou faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. David is saying, Lord, you, uh, you know, he, he's asking the Lord to hear him. He's asking the Lord, don't judge me uh, against all the things that I know that I'm not doing right. Uh, I am your, your servant. I am your child. Uh, uh, have mercy and pity on me. It said, for the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. For th therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Amen. As we look at that portion, just that portion right there, we are to realize this is not necessarily the enemy on the outside. It can be the enemy uh, right next to us. We can be it be the enemy we person we work with. It can be the person in our home. Uh, it's not necessarily someone that's on the outside that gives us this feeling of of of, of, dwe of dwelling in darkness, of of, of troubled mind, of, of, of troubled spirit. We are to. Uh, uh, look at this and realize this could be in any circumstance that we are going going through. It says, therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. In this time when you're going through, many times you feel burdened down. You, 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 uh, you, you, the trouble is, is overwhelming. It says, I remember the days of old and I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. 
if we look at David, when we are going through troubles and trials, as we were speaking of just then, uh, that we feel that we're in darkness, that we feel that we are uh, 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 go going under, uh, uh, you know, just got a head above water holding on. We are to uh, meditate and pray to the Lord. We are to put in our remembrance that we are be it, that we may be in joy the things that he has done in our life, the things that we have seen done through uh, him. And so as we do meditate on these things, and it, it always reminds me of David when uh, when he went to fight Goliath, and as he said, as, as I uh, fought the bear and as I fought the lion and, 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 and I succeeded in this, I will uh, destroy this uh, uh, uncircumcised Philistine. We must Take our past experience, bring them to forefront, keep reminding ourselves what the Lord has brought us through, and he will, it will give you joy, it will give you strength, it will give you to uh, really mean the phrase that we say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. And say, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsts after thee as a thirsty land. This is so wonderful that when we, uh, especially we know this to be, many of us know this to be true, when we are in dire trouble, when we are having so many uh, tr uh, troubled circumstances in our life, that we do stretch forth our hand to the Lord. We do uh, uh, seek for him as a dry land. We do seek after him as, as a land that is thirsty for water, that we need more of him and more uh, uh, more understanding of him, being able to hear him better. And we should seek after these things, not just when we are going through, but when we are not going through, that he may be able to uh, 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 give us more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding uh, when we are not in stress, when we are not uh, in, in turmoil. It says, hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth, Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Curse me, cause me, I'm sorry, to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk. Not uh, 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 take me through the easy path. Take me through things that, that which is, uh, I can get, to the, to the other side without any problem, but take me through the path which I should walk. Whatever you feel that I should walk in, Lord, take me through this path. It said, deliver me, O Lord, from thine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprighteousness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble, and of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Amen. This is a powerful and wonderful lesson. I'm going to read you a passage, excuse me, from the Matthew Henry Concise Commentary. It says, We have no righteousness of our own to plead. Therefore, must plead God's righteousness and the word of promise which he has freely given us and caused us to hope in. David, before he prays for the removal of his trouble, prays for the pardon of his sin and depends upon mercy alone for it. He bemoans the weight upon his mind from outward troubles, but he looks back and remembers God's former appearance for his afflicted people and for him in particular. He looks around and notices the works of God the more we consider the power of God, the less we shall fear the face or force of man. He looks up with earnest desires toward God and his favor. This is the best course we can take. When our spirits are overwhelmed, the, believe, the believer will not forget that in his best action, he is a sinner. Meditation and prayer will recover us from distress. And then the mourning soul strives to return to the Lord as the infant stretches out his hand to the indulgent mother and thirsts for his, for his consolation as the parched ground for a refreshing rain. David prays that God would be well pleased with him and let him know that he was so. He pleased the wretchedness of his case 
if God withdrew himself from him. Amen. God will uh, let you know whether he's pleased with what you're doing if you ask him. And he also uh, will, uh, we should also be aware and know that we are wretchedness in God's sight that we, uh, unless and we are in his, uh, son, under his son, uh, believing in Jesus Christ and walking in his way. But the night of distress and discouragement shall end in a morning of consolation and praise. He prayed that he might be enlightened with the knowledge of God's will. And this is the first work of the Spirit. A good man does not ask the way in which is the most pleasant walking, but what is the right way. Not only show me what thy will is, but teach me how to do it. Those who have the Lord for their God have his spirit in, in their, for their guide. They are led by the spirit. He prays that he might be in, in living to do God's will. Now, David, back in those days, didn't have the Holy Spirit indwelling in him as we do. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling in us. And he, as he was able to, to, to communicate with David, he is now able to communicate with us on a daily basis, teaching us and showing us the way to go. If we seek him, he shall uh, continue to guide us. But we should especially seek the destruction of our sin, our worst enemies. This enemy of uh, our sin is our worst enemy. The enemy, this our enemy, the sin that we have in our life, many times brings on things that uh, come about in our life. The problem that we face, the, the situation that we have to deal with, is because our the, our worst enemy, the sins that we have in our life or have had in our life, that we may be devotedly God's servant. Amen. Excuse me. Amen. There is this uh, lesson. Uh, Justified by faith, which is Romans the third chapter, the twenty-first verse through the thirty-first verse. But now, the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and up all of them that believe. For there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified free, freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation or turn, turning away of wrath, is what this propitiation means, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law? Of works, nay, by, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. Because we are living right, because we are walking uh, with the Lord, because we are walking with Jesus Christ and following his God and doing his will, then we establish the law. Because the law is made for those that are guilty, those that do not do right. And we are doing, we are following Jesus. We have died to self and we are living again as, as Christ lives through us. And as we are going forth in this stead, then the Lord is our guide. He is our strength. Amen. Uh, the uh, Matthew Henry Concise Commentary says, Must guilty man remain under wrath? Is the wound forever incurable? No, blessed be God. There's another way laid up open for us. This is the righteousness of God. Righteousness is his ordaining and providing and accepting. It is by that faith which has Jesus Christ for its object, an anointed Savior. So Jesus Christ signifies justifying faith 
respects Christ as a savior and all his three anointed offices as prophet, priest, and king, trusting in him, accepting him, and and cleaving to him in all these Jews and Gentiles are alike welcome to God through Christ. There is no difference. His righteousness is upon all that believe, not only offered to them, but put upon them as a crown, as a robe. It is free grace, mere mercy. There is nothing in us to deserve such favors. It comes freely unto us, but Christ bought it and paid the price and faith has special regard to the blood of Christ as that which made the atonement. God in all this declares his righteousness. It is plain that he hates sin, and when nothing else, nothing less than the blood of Christ would satisfy for it. And it would not, it, it would not agree with his justice to demand the debt. When the surety has paid it, and he has accepted that payment in full satisfaction. He has accepted Christ uh, going on the cross pay as payment in full for our sins. And we must go through Christ in order to receive that, 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 uh, that, that uh, uh, satisfaction of payment in full. It's that God will have the great work of the justification and salvation of sinners carried on from first to last so as to shut out boasting. Now, if we were saved by our own works, boasting would not be excluded, but the way of justification by faith forever shuts out boasting. Yet believers are not left to be lawless. Faith is a law. It is a working grace where, wherever it is in truth. By faith, not in, in this matter, an act of obedience are a good work, but forming the relation between Christ and the sinner, which renders it proper that the believer should be pardoned and justified for the sake of the Savior, and that the unbeliever who is not thus united or related to him should remain under condemnation. The law is still of use to convince us of what is past and to direct us for the future. Though we cannot be saved by it as a covenant, yet we own and submit to it as a rule in the hand of the mediator. Amen. This is a great and wonderful lesson. As we move on to uh, Friday's lesson, Friday's lesson uh, is Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. And this is coming from uh, Galatians 2, 15 to 21. Galatians 2, 15 to 21. Christ lives in me. Do we go forth and do we uh, have the light? Do we have the light that shows that Christ lives in us? It says, we who, who are Jews by nature are not, sinners of, are not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even the Jews realized that the law could not save them. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. <coughs> Excuse me. For by the works of the law, <coughs> Excuse me. By the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Now this lesson here is speaking as Peter had uh, come up uh, and was with Paul and some of the others, and he had... Uh, stepped forth and he was acting as if he had not been with Gentiles uh, previously. He had ate with them, he had sat with them, he had talked with them, He because uh, Jesus Christ had gave uh, uh, him the anointing, the vision that uh, uh, to call no man clean, unclean uh, common. 
he had given him the knowledge and the ability to go uh, to Cornelius and to uh, bring the word to that family. And so, but, and when he get around the Jews again, and everybody is around, now he gonna act like he hadn't been with Jews. He gonna sit aside, he gonna sit to the side, and, and Paul is, is uh, rebuking him for doing such a thing, and when we allow such a thing to go forth uh, without saying anything, even if it's one of the higher brothers or sisters, in, in love we should uh, uh, speak the truth. Um, if we allow this to happen, then it will bring down others that is watching, that is with us. It says, for I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. If law, the law could have uh, uh, did what Christ did, he wouldn't have had to go on the cross. But the law could not do it. So this is why Jesus Christ had to go on the cross, that we may have an opportunity to the right to the tree of life. Amen. Uh, the uh, Believer's Bible Commentary says, Paul seemed to be using irony here. Did not Peter's conduct betray a lingering conviction concerning the superiority of the Jews and the despised position of the Gentiles? Peter should have known better because God had taught him before the conversion of the Gentile Cornelius to call no man common or unclean in Acts 10 and 11, 1 through 18. Said, the Jews who had been saved knew that there was no salvation in the law. The law condemned to death those who failed to obey it perfectly. This brought the curse on all, because all have broken its God precepts. The Savior is here presented as the only true object of faith. Paul reminds Peter that even we Jews came to the conclusion that salvation is by faith in Christ and not by law keeping. What was the sense now of Peter's putting Gentiles under the law? The law told people what to do, but gave them no power to do it. It was given to reveal sin, not to be a savior. Paul and Peter and others had sought justification in Christ in, and in Christ alone. Peter's actions at Antioch, however, seemed to indicate that he was not completely justified, but had to go back under the law to complete his salvation. If this is so, then Christ is not a perfect and sufficient Savior. If we go, uh, go to him to have our sins forgiven, but then have to go elsewhere in addition, is not Christ a minister of sin in failing to fulfill his promises? If while we are professedly, professedly dependent on Christ for justification, we then go back to the law, which can only condemn us as sinners, do we act as Christian? Is that truly a Christian? Can we hope for Christ's approval of such a course of action that in effect makes him a minister of sin? Paul's answer is an indigent, certainly not. Peter had abandoned the whole legal system for faith in Christ. He had reputed any difference between Jew and Gentile when it came to finding favor with God. Now by refusing to eat with the Gentiles, he is building up again what he once destroyed. In so doing, he proves himself to be a transgressor or a violator of the law. Either he was wrong in leaving the law for Christ, or he is wrong now in leaving Christ for the law. You got to make your, de your decision on what side, where you stand with the Lord. The penalty for breaking the law is death. As a sinner, I had broken the law, therefore it condemned me to die. But Christ paid the penalty of the broken law for me by dying in my place. Thus, when Christ died, I died. He died to the law in the sense that he met all is righteous demand. Therefore, in Christ, I too have died in the law. When we go down in baptism and come up, we die to the law and we are raised again unto Christ. It said the Christian has died to the law. 
he has nothing more to do with it. Does this mean that the believer is at liberty to break the Ten Commandments all he wants? No, he lives a holy life, not through fear of the law, but out of love to the one who died for him. Christians who desire to be under the law as a pattern of behavior do not realize that this places them under its curse. Moreover, they cannot touch the law in in on point without being responsible to keep it completely. The only way we can live to God is by being dead to the law. The law could never produce a holy life. God never intended that it should. His way of holiness is explained in verse 20. The believer is identified with Christ in his death. Not only was he crucified on Calvary, I was crucified there as well, in him. This means the end of me as a sinner in God's sight. It means the end of me as a person seeking to merit or earn salvation by my own efforts. It means the end of me as a child of Adam, as a man under the condemnation of the law, as my old unregenerate self, the old evil I has been crucified. It has no more claims on my daily life. This is true as to my standing before God. It should be true as to my behavior. If this is true as to, in, 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 in when you stand before God, it should be true into your as your behavior and how you act and what you do and what you say. It says the believer does not seek to live as a personality or as an individual, but the one who is seen by God as having died is not the same one who lives. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The Savior did not die for me in order that I might go on living my life as I choose. He died for me so that from now on he might be able to live his life in me. The life which I now live in this human body, I live by faith in the Son of God. Faith means reliance or dependence. The Christian lives by continually dependence on Christ, by yielding to him, by allowing Christ to live his life in him. We are to allow Christ to walk, to talk, to do his life in us. As we go forth, we are to speak. We are to testify to those we see. We are to bring the word of the Lord to those we see. We are to lay hands on the sick. We are to uh, uh, heal those that are sick. We are to uh, uh, cast out devils. We are to raise the dead. We are to do. We are to do the works of the Lord, knowing that as as we speak frequently, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Mean it when you say it. Don't just say it. The I is you. The I is you in person. So you have to, if you say it, it, say it and mean it. Go forth and mean it as the Lord would have us to. Thus the believer's rule of life is Christ and not the law. It is not a matter of striving, but of trusting. He lives a holy life, not out of fear of punishment, but out of love to the Son of God, who loved him and gave himself for him. Have you ever turned your life over to the Lord Jesus with the prayer that his life might be manifest in your body? Let, let, and as we, uh, and it, as we say, if we accepted Christ, he is in our body. But the more that we uh, speak it, the more that we work in it, the more that we walk in it, as they say, as they say in the word, we grow faith by faith. As we step out in it, uh, our faith grow. As we go forward to do, our faith grow from one thing to the next. It's faith to faith as we go forth, but we must go forth. It said the grace of God is seen in his unconditional gift of salvation. When man tries to earn it, he is making it void. It is no longer by grace of man deserves it or earns it. Paul's found thrust at Peter is effective. If Peter could obtain favor with God by Jewish observance, then Christ died for nothing. He literally threw his life away. Christ died because man could obtain righteousness in no other way, not even by law keeping. Especially through law keeping could they, uh, because when you go one way, you fall. When you turn another way, you fall. It, it, 
we only through the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ are we able to stand and go forward because we still uh, falter in our steps. But through the grace of God and the Holy Spirit living, living in us and guiding us and strengthening us, then we go forward. Amen. Uh, the Saturday's lesson, which is receiving the Spirit through faith. Receiving the Spirit through faith. And this uh, uh, lesson is coming from Galatians 3, 6 through 14. Receiving the Spirit through faith. And the scripture lesson takes read, Even as Adam believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of, Adam, of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, Preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, And these shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. It said, For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. If you are doing the law, then you must do each and every one of them. You cannot falter in a one. And only Jesus Christ was able to do that. It said, but, by, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that does them shall live in them. If you do things by the law, you is of the law. But if you live by faith, you are of Christ. It said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen. This That we would receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. We that have accepted Jesus Christ do, do receive the Spirit through of Jesus Christ within us, walking with us daily through faith. And as we make it ourselves more aware that Jesus Christ, his spirit is walking with me today, we will watch what we say, how we say things, what we are saying, and what we are doing to others and how we are doing things to others. Let us uh, uh, bring to our forefront, our memory, our mind, uh, that Jesus Christ his Holy Spirit is walking with us daily as we go about and then realize that what as we do unto others, we are doing it unto him. Amen. Uh, the, uh, I'm going to read you a passage from the uh, uh, Matthew Henry Concise Commentary. It said, Faith had been the means to of Abraham acceptance with God. In Galatians 3, 6 through 10, from the first, the gospel of faith had been proclaimed to him by the divine spirit. Long before he had become a Jew, by the initial rite of Judaism, he had been a humble believer in God's promise on the basis of which he was reckoned righteous. Simple faith was the only condition that he had fulfilled and the promise that all flesh should be blessed through him. He had been given when he was still a believing Gentile. Abraham was still a believing Gentile at this time. It says, surely what had sufficed for the father of the faithful was good enough for his children. Yet each reader see to it that he does not merely believe about Christ, but believes in Christ, believe in him, so as to be no longer under the curse, but within the blessing, which is in Jesus Christ. Inheritance of the promise we are. And so we are not under the ceremonial law as contained in the precepts of the Leviticus. Our Savior has perfectly fulfilled them on the, on the behalf of the Jewish people whom he presented from his birth until his death. The law of ordinance is then ob 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 mm, obligated on their behalf. And we Gentiles have never been placed under its thrall. Amen. Forgive me for my mispronunciation of the word. I couldn't, couldn't say it, just couldn't say it. 
It said, as to the curse that is uttered against everyone, whether Jew or Gentile, that offends against the moral code declared in the Ten Commandments at Sinai, our Savior has redeemed us from that by becoming a curse for us. There is nothing for us to do but to trust in his finished work and to enter upon the same heritage of blessed service as was unfolded to Abraham in Galatians 12, 1 through 13. Amen. This is a powerful lesson that we have. Amen. We move on to Sunday's lesson. Our uh, uh, lesson that all of this is winding up on faith without works. It, we have walked through the, the text on faith without works. Now we move into uh, James 2, 14 through 26. It said, What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed in fear, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Amen. We're going to stop here. We're going to look back at verse 14. What does it profit? What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say? Look at that word again, say. The man said he had faith. Just saying the word does not make, I can, anybody can say they're a Christian and not be, be, not be one. Anybody can say that they believe in the Lord and not, not, and not believe. We can say a lot of things. Uh, we have to be mindful of what we say uh, to make sure that these are things are true because he is just saying that he has faith. He has, he's not living a life of showing that he has faith. He's just saying he has faith. It says just like uh, uh, seeing somebody, uh, 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 sister, brother, uh, naked and without food. Well, uh, my goodness, you, you ain't got a piece of clothes that you can give them, a, a, a little food you can give them to eat. Something, uh, and you say that you uh, have the Lord Jesus in your midst, uh, in your spirit, that you walk with you and he talks with you, but yet still you can't feed your brother and sister. This is not of the Lord. This is, we cannot, uh, 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 we must have some seed to show that, that, that we are a Christian and, and being and doing what the Lord uh, would have us to do is to do for our brother and sister, is to teach and to guide them and to help them in all true paths of right. Even the things that, that is uh, of uh, uh, monetary value, food, clothes, those type of things, if we are able to help, help. And I'm not saying when I get a bunch, I'm going to give some, share what you have. And if you share in faith, the Lord will provide. Amen. It said, even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I'll show, you, show thee my faith by my works. If you say you got faith, then you're going to do something. You're going to be kind to someone. You're going to uh, uh, give a testimony to someone. You're going to uh, pray for someone. If you have faith, if you truly have faith, it said, that's mean he said, I will show you mine by my work. My faith shows that I heal the sick, that I pray for the sick, that I uh, uh, pray uh, with those that are sick. I, I minister to those that are uh, in, 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 in poor in spirit. I, I speak the word of encouragement to those poor in spirit. I do what the Lord Jesus would have me to do as unto a brother or sister. Thou believest that there is one God? Thou does well. The devil also believe and tremble. Guess what? You ain't the only one believe that believe in God. They the Satan know there's a God. Uh, uh, the devil know there's a God. But do you do he know there's a God enough to turn and change? No. So where do you stand? Knowing God and doing something about it is two different things. Walking in his way, just say, you know, God, I, I, I'm a, I, I, I believe in the Lord, but is you doing anything? What are you doing about it? Amen. It says, but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? It says, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, 
and by works was faith made perfect. As Abraham uh, believed in, in God, and with his belief in God, and then when God told him to offer his son on the altar, and as he went to offer his son on the altar, all he had was the sticks in his son and the knife to, 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 to offer the, the, the sacrifice with. He did not have the lamb to, to offer. All he had was what he was told to offer, and that was his son. And when he went to offer, the Lord, the God told him, because you believe, you are a friend. You, he was his, he belonged to him. Amen. It said, and the scripture was fulfilled, which said, Abraham believed God and was it imputed unto him for righteousness. Amen. This is what I was trying to say just then, that when Abraham believed and went up to do as he was told to do, he was brought to him for righteousness. It said he was called the friend of God. It said, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. He, had, he did works to show that he believed what, what that believed in God. It said, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the message and had sent them out another way. She believed in the God that they had because she had heard from others that the God that led this, this mighty nation that was coming uh, had uh, destroyed a many nation and that they were they were successful. And so she stepped out in believing in this God. And so she did for these spies. And this was a counter to her as well. Uh, she was justified through faith by what she did. It said, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. If we don't have uh, the spirit, our spirit in our body, we are dead. When the spirit leaves the body, we are dead. When faith, when we don't have works that shows who we are and what we are and that we are a child of God, then we have not faith. Our faith is dead. Amen. I'm going to read you a passage from uh, the uh, Matthew Henry, from the heart of the lesson, I'm sorry. Um, it says, worthless faith, coming from James 2, 14 through 7. Uh, and this is coming from our Sunday School book, the Bible Expo and Illuminator, as I speak to you about frequently, where you can get all the, uh, the lessons that I'm teaching. Uh, you can uh, also get the extended version of it to get more in-depth into it. It's a worthless faith, James 2, 14 through 17. James dealt with the evidence of genuine faith, and he began this section with this rhetorical question. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Crucial to understanding this passage is recognizing that James and Paul were not in contradiction when Paul declared, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of works, in Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. He was not speaking from man's perspective. God reads the heart. We do not. We see only the visible manifestation of one's faith, his works. And in that faith is the light that Jesus Christ said that we should have shine before men, that our light should shine so before men. Man, we do not get a candle and light it and put it on a bushel. We set it in a candlestick on a counter that it may be seen. This is the, that men may see it. Man is justified before God by faith and before mankind by works. This is how we are able to bring others to bring others to Christ to 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 uh, be a testimony to others is by our uh, faith in Jesus Christ and walking out with it. James then informed his readers that words alone reveal a worthless faith. One who is naked or hungry is helped not at all by well wishing. Thus, James declared that faith without evidential service is worthless. Are we well wishers or do we add action to our words? If not, our words is worthless. Worldly faith in James 2, 18 through 20. James used a hypothetical situation in verse 18 for illustrative purposes. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. 
He then used an illustration of demonic faith to show that words alone reveal a dead faith. The devils also believe and tremble in James 2 and 19. His point, however, is that their faith is not saving faith. It is merely intellectual assent. Do we put our faith into action or is our faith simply words? Worthwhile faith. James 2, 21 through 26. James turned to the example of Abraham to illustrate his faith works argument. Uh, was not Abraham our father justified before men by works? Again, just so that there is no doubt that regeneration is a result of faith, just as 15 and 6 declares that and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord and he counted to him for righteousness. Abraham was justified before God, who reads the heart by faith, but before men by his works. Obedience, his spirit inspired James to cite Genesis 15 and 6 to show that Abraham's faith resulted in God's righteousness being imputed to him. Finally, James used the illustration of Rahab, who demonstrated justification before men as she put her faith into action by saving the spies in James 2 and 25, he then restated that just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. In verse 26, today's world is tired of worthless, wordy, pretense faith. We May we put our faith into action in both serving God and serving others. Let us Put our faith in action. Let us go forward and be doers of the word and not hearers only. I pray you meditate on this lesson and y'all have a wonderful and blessed day.